Alaska, the spring thaw brings partiers out of hibernation. We're going to look for a man dressed in a bear costume that is allegedly selling shrooms. What's up, my bear? Put your hands up on my bar. Do it now. I will park the food. And on the 4th of July weekend. See that line right there? Fireworks aren't just in the sky. You have a what on you? Fire. Hey, hey. I'm going to jail. Yep, all three guys are going to jail. And when bears wake up hungry, troopers take every precaution. We'll back in our shotgun with slugs. Might end up having to shoot one. Melting ice. There's two snow machines. They break through the ice, two people. Leads to a search and rescue in deadly waters. There's a good possibility that we won't find them. Hey, man, out of the way! From patrolling the world's largest fishery. There is one word to describe this fishery. Insanity. To showdowns with some of the country's most armed citizens. They said he probably has an AK-47 with him. This is Alaska State Troopers. Put your hands up! Get your hands up! Back left, someone's moving around the front. Get your hands up! Spring, in Alaska's western frontier, where in the remote town of Bethel, Rising temperatures still only mean 20 degree days and 8 degree nights. Not the type of temperatures to get lost in. Bethel PD has somebody that's lost. They were uh, possibly trying to walk to Quiqua and uh, she's intoxicated, it sounds like. She said she's wet as well. So we need to, being that she's wet, we need to respond immediately. Trooper Dan Gunderson knows firsthand the dangers of prolonged exposure. Before I was a trooper, I used to be a teacher out here, and one of my students, he was riding a snow machine, crashed, and then was wandering around, and he froze to death. He doesn't want a repeat of that tragedy. The woman is trying to walk 11 miles across a frozen river. If she falls through the ice, she has less than 15 minutes before hypothermia can turn fatal. She's in an area that we can't really access with a patrol truck without getting stuck, so I'm going to respond on the snow machine. The other trooper's going to go out and be in the area. You go up in there and just come in, and we'll, we'll maybe try to meet. Yeah. Well, don't do okay. any, don't get stuck, you know. But no, uh, no, no. I'll turn my lights on when I get to the top. Okay. Trooper Gunderson heads out on snow machine. While Trooper Sherman Powell contacts the victim by cell phone. Um, I'm at the bottom of, of uh, Steamboat Slough. That's where he thinks you are. I'm in a truck. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my siren and see if you can hear it, okay? Only my um, air horn's working. Can you hear that? After nearly an hour, Gunderson spots a clue, a set of fresh footprints. lead Gunderson into immediate danger. Thin spots and cracks on the frozen river from the rising spring temperatures. The river is not yet fully frozen again, so you got really good ice right here. You got not so good ice on top of that, so then you'll fall in. Yeah, you can get in a, a lot of a bad trouble really quick. Okay, I'm going to go across, so hold on. Okay. Powell heads off the main trail in search of his partner. 
but the deep snow stops him in his tracks. Now I shovel. Powell is still unsure what kind of state the woman or his partner are in. He's stuck. Dennison is one Charlie twenty two. Dennison one Charlie twenty two. Dennison is one Charlie twenty two. Twenty twenty three. I got her. Ten four. Ten five with you at the bottom of the floor. Ten four, are you gonna continue down? Negative, it works well it's worse up here. Okay, well, uh, well, I'll bring her down. Meet you at the bottom. Alright, well, you're alright. My feet are cold, but I can manage. Because I'm a survivor. Okay. I love to be outside. Okay. So you're going to walk to Quitla? Yeah. Alright, well, well, we'll talk about that more when we get back. Let's okay. get you, let's have you sit on the snow machine a little bit. I want to check your feet. But they're not frostbite. Okay, they're not frostbite? No. Okay. Because I could feel. Okay, yeah. Um, let me tie your laces so you okay. fall off and we'll get You know what? We've got all this snow in here. Okay. Oh, uh, my it feels pants, like it's frozen, huh? Yeah, my pants are frozen. Okay. And it's not wearing snow pants. Yeah. I don't have hypothermia. Okay. We'll bring you to the hospital just to be sure, okay? Okay. They rush back to Powell's truck. She needs to get to the hospital. She's got her feet are really frozen. Or, you know, very, very cold. She's got cotton socks on and been soaked for. Have you looked at them? A couple hours. I took one of the, the shoes off. It's bad. We should probably get her there right away. You jump in there, we'll try to push you. All the way down. safely on her way to the hospital, Gunderson knows this call could have ended much differently. Um, she had to have been out for a couple of hours to get this far. Quith look is in a straight line is probably 15 miles. She could have died. Four hundred miles east in the Matsu Valley. A rise in temperature means a rise in crime. Back on T38. T38. I'm in the middle of that, so that's piece, but I was just flagged reference to two guys in a fist fight at 1010 about a half a mile down the road. It appears there's a fight on the road just down from another troopers. Hang on, Hang on. We're going to be there in about 10 seconds. Yeah, we'll see what this guy's doing. Looks like it's going to be a WMA flag check with Lucian. He's got a mallet in his hand. Keep your hands where I can see him. Turn around. Why are you carrying a mallet? I just picked up that. Hey, turn around. You got blood all over you. What's going on? Oh, my cousin just came up to me and started fighting me. Your cousin came up to you and started fighting? Where's your cousin at? He took off in a car. Which, what kind? Come on, man. Don't lie to me. What kind of car? Green car. You have any weapons on you other than the, the knives and stuff? No, I just, no. What's he dressed like? Uh, What's his last name? Big boy. Uh, Come on, man. Don't lie to me. What? I'm telling Come you. on over here, man. By the look of this man and his weapons, Trooper Josh Veris is worried the other man might be seriously injured. Can I have something? Why do you have a mallet in your hands I over there? I picked it up and... You picked it up? Because you were going to fight with him with it? No, no. Do you have a phone number on your phone? Uh, Go ahead and look it up. They call the other man's cell phone, but get no answer. Any word on the other male half? I got an address for him. Have you sent someone there yet? Let's do that. Hey, you didn't hit him with this mallet, did you? No, no, no. And you didn't cut him with this, this X-Acto knife? 
With each passing minute, Barris's concern grows. So, is it looking more like uh, mutual combat then, or? All right, man. Thanks for your help. Bye. Hey, Glenn, turn around. Okay. Do you need medic medics? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm not. Okay. I, nothing wrong with me. Nothing wrong with you. You got blood all over you, man. You sure you don't want medics? No, I'm fine. What are these pills for? Those are for my ears. I take it for my ears because. What are they? Uh, they're a type of. Uh, Sarah, I think it's a Seroquel or something. That I take those things because look at my ear. Huh? See my ear hole? Yeah. I got the thing growing out of it, and that's the only thing that takes pain. How come yeah. the prescription on this bottle is ripped off? I, I don't have no idea. Are you prescribed these by a doctor? No. You're not. So how did you get them? Uh, somebody gave them to me. Somebody gave them to you? Yeah. Okay. How much did you pay for? I did. She gave them to me. You know you're not supposed to have it if it's not prescribed to you, right? Uh, yeah, I do kind of know that. Yeah. Yeah, you do know that. Okay. Go ahead and have a seat back there. Now he's in possession of a controlled substance. So, unfortunately, he's going to go to jail for it today, and I can explain to a uh, judge and jury about why he can't get a legal prescription. Eighty miles south, along the picturesque Seward Highway, residents in the town of Birdwood are eager to let off steam after a long winter indoors. For now, we have the forest fair going on, so it means tonight it's going to be pretty busy. We're going to bring all of the troopers off of the highway and bring them into the Girdwood area. It's the area's annual big party. What do you got under your coat? But combining drugs and alcohol in the heart of the wilderness can be fatal. There are many people out here, and Girdwood has its fair share of bears, so uh, if they fall asleep and a bear happens to stumble upon them, I mean, you can imagine what would happen there. There have been multiple maulings in the past few months, so troopers are on high alert. But bears aren't the only suspects on the radar. Gotta go. I wanna go right over here to assist the trooper who has been uh, oh, Some help. I got him on that side. Without knowing what the man took, he could be in serious danger. Look at me. Come on. Walk to the car. Just walk. We're not going to kill you. We're going to talk to you. Nice to meet you. Corey, come on. We're almost to the police vehicle. He was smoking something when we showed up. What was he smoking? This is marijuana. Whose bag is this? Is there anything in here that I didn't know about? Uh -oh. So that's where all the mushrooms are coming from. Are you selling? So you need to explain that. Is that all that you're hiding? Are you on them right now? Yes. How many did you eat? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Have you been in this level of the high score on the train? Yeah. Yeah. Has it been higher than this on the train? Yeah. Three. Got 123 right there. They also find a stack of cash on him. Uh, two. Basically, with this uh, amount of money here, uh, I definitely believe that he is out here selling. He may not be the only one. There's a guy walking around town in like a bear suit selling shrimps. Bear suit selling shrimps? Yeah. He's got like okay. tattoos on his nose. Like, okay. That's weird. All right. Yeah, so people. All right, we'll take a look. We're gonna look for a man dressed in a bear costume. Hopefully he's not uh, off in the woods already and hopefully he's still in town. Looks like a bear. State troopers, come over here for a second. What kind of outfit are you in? Bear You're in a bear outfit? Yeah, bear. Perfect. Hey, do you have uh, any uh, idea on here to take a look at? What, what am I getting busted? I'm just, I'm just out here contacting you. We got some uh, complaints oh. about some conduct, okay? Uh, I'm having you go up to the front of my car, okay? Just put your hands right on the uh, hood of my car. But like a real bear, this one's aggressive and unpredictable. Put your hands up on my bar. Do it now. Why, you put your hands. Right I'm not going to tase you. Okay. Here. Hey, family! Check this out! Hey, kids! Skirtwood! What's up, my family? What's up? What do you got here? You got nunchucks? Yeah! Yeah! 
Oh, my boy's gonna show up, too. Where are your boys at? They're gonna show up. Doesn't matter. I'll tell you what, if you make threats towards me, we're gonna have some serious issues. Hey, don't yell, okay? You're gonna go to jail for disorderly conduct. Oh, really? What did I do wrong with it? A male with tattoos on his face, which you have in a bear outfit, is out here selling shrooms, okay? Oh. You match that description, so at this point you're gonna be detained for investigation. You got a pipe and I got a bowl in my left pocket. You got a pipe and you got bowls in your left pocket? I have no mushrooms. No, but you have marijuana. Hey, that's Alaska. So? It's not, it's it's not legal. legal. It's still in you. It's not legal in the state of Alaska. Okay. There's no tolerance for any type of controlled substance. Marijuana is definitely a controlled substance. I've never come across anybody in a bear suit, particularly not a bear with nunchucks, so this is definitely a first for me. Back in the Matsu Valley, encounters with bears aren't out of the ordinary for wildlife trooper Jimmy Lindbergh. to uh, Baldy Mountain. Uh, we got a report that there's a bear carcass up there, so we're going to try to uh, locate the bear carcass. Once we do that, we're going to try to determine how or why the bear died. It sounds like there's a gunshot wound to the uh, bear's chest. In Alaska, killing a black bear and not harvesting the meat is a serious crime and can bring a year in prison. This area that we're going up into uh, it's a popular area for the local people to uh, bear hunt. So we need to be on our toes uh, every corner that we go around heading up the side of the mountain. But heavily armed hunters aren't the only danger that Lindbergh must watch out for. Alaska State Troopers rescued seven teenagers last night after a bear mauling left four seriously injured. The grizzly tops Alaska's food chain. And in the late spring, after months of hibernation, coming between these 700 pound predators and a meal is a bad idea. This uh, bear has been dead for a couple days or a week. A uh, grizzly bear might be feeding on him. We'll back in our shotgun with slugs and uh, just keep our eyes open. I'm putting slugs in here because uh, they've got more knockdown power. Uh, I've got a better chance of of knocking a bear down with a slug than I do with a buckshot. I've got a metal detector here. I've got my skinny knife. I've got a saw. And I've got some hip boots just in case we get stuck in the mud. All the necessities of a day at the office. I think it might have been bear, but that's, that's some old moose tracks there. The gentleman that uh, saw the bear said it was uh, in this general vicinity. We should be able to smell it. That is, of course, unless a big grizzly hasn't drug it off and uh, decided to make it uh, his dinner. He stops to scan the area on foot. Without the noise of his ATV to scare them off, he's more vulnerable to the aggressive grizzlies. Right now, uh, the young cubs are with the sows. That, that's where we run into a lot of problems when people get in between the cubs and the sow. Mama sow is gonna do anything she can to uh, get at her cubs. One thing you really need to be cognizant of is that there are a lot of wild animals up here. You just need to make sure that they see you We should be smelling something. Deep in the forest, he reaches the ultimate bear lure. A bait station. So he's got a combination of salt and sugar. You can see the moose tracks in here. This entire area was covered in dog food and meat. You can see where they poured molasses all over the tree here. With all this alluring bait, a bear is likely in the area. It could be ugly. Might end up having to shoot one. The last thing I want to do is 
shoot a bear out here, but if it has to be done, we're in the right spot. I'm thinking a grizzly came and pulled it out of here. Probably down over this hill. He finds no sign of the black bear carcass and heads out. I certainly would have liked to have found it and find out how it died. It's frustrating. But it's all part of doing what we do. I'll remember this place next year and, and come back. The Matsu Valley has one of the largest populations of bear in the state. But it's the human population that troopers worry about most. Just miles from the bait station, Trooper Barris picks up where he left off, right in the thick of the action. Uh, this gentleman's name is Ron. He's an elderly gentleman and kind of considers himself a uh, constitutionalist, if you will, and believes he's a sovereign citizen. So. So I've got uh, three other units going with me, past dealings with some of these guys. A lot of them are armed, to say the least, so. A call from the complainant puts Barris on edge. Now, how many people do you suppose are at uh, this place? Two to possibly four? Do you think there's a chance that he's going to try to do any harm to us, or? Well, I don't know. Barris meets with two other troopers to formulate a game plan. He's at the house from what they think. They said he probably has an AK-47 with him. That's all we got. We're going to go to the Clayton's house. He says it's about 150 yards down his driveway. He says there could be two to four people at his place right now. Here's what I don't like. He said he's in the blue house. He said he lives in a shanty. And I really hope that that's not the shanty. So. Yeah. That's it. Doors open on the trailer. He's moving. Put your hands! Put your hands up! Stay troopers! Stay troopers! Put your hands up! Get your hands up! Back left, someone's moving around the front! He's really old, he doesn't know what's going on right now. Put your hands up, Ron! Let me know when you're clear! Back left passenger! Ron, get your hands up! Gunner! Ron, get both hands where I can see him. You have a warrant for your arrest. Put your hands up, do it now. Where's Ron at? He's so cute, old dude. Keep them up. Don't be putting them down. Put them up. The troopers pull three others out of the car. Turn around. Turn away from me. Anybody else is rocking right? Are there any other people besides the guy on the camera? It's clear. Nobody else inside your house, sir? How old are you? I'm 22. 22? How old are you? You're 17. How old are you? 23. Your parents know where you're at? Yes, sir. They know you're out smoking weed? What brought all this on? Well, I've been looking for you, sir. You have a warrant for your arrest. It's a warrant based on what? Failure to appear. I, I hate to say this, but failure to appear? Yes, sir. Should not represent as many as, as time is taking our legal system to deal with this. Right. Well, unfortunately, we'll have to take you down. You can talk to the uh, magistrate about it, and uh, it's up to the judge on what he wants to do with you. We're going to pat you down, too, okay? okay? And I'm going to run like hell. Are you? <laughs> Let me know how that works out for you. Hop it. Well, if I can get in there. So. <laughs> All right. Oh. You need help? 
Easiest way to do it is your rear end first. You have to take the hand off. There ain't like I'm gonna run. The troopers wheel in their man peacefully. But over 300 miles southwest in Bristol Bay, hundreds of fishermen battle for a catch of their own. Bristol Bay is the largest sockeye salmon commercial fishery in the world. There is one word to describe this fishery, insanity. With up to a quarter million dollars on the line, some fishermen will do whatever it takes for their share of the money. Get it quick! So the Alaska State Troopers are out in force to protect the fishery. They're there to make money, and if there's a way to make more money, they're going to try. Get on the Veteran pilot Sergeant Brent Johnson will patrol the bay by plane. But a dangerous storm front looms. So we've got a storm coming in, forecast anywhere from 25 to 40 knot winds. But we go out no matter what the weather is. They're out fishing, we're going to be out patrolling. You gotta make sure you give yourself enough time to turn town and run back home before it catches you. They know that we obviously can't fly when the weather gets too poor, so if the weather's marginal, it's, it's usually the best time to come out and do this. Because they don't expect us to be out. And here we go. He heads for the fishery's southernmost boundary. And we just, I'm just gonna be sneaking along here, try to see if any boats are doing anything wrong. These guys are pulling the net in by hand out here as fast as they can. They're well in the closed water. Got another one right here, trying to pull his net in. Get right over here, we get a GPS point. As he documents the first two, he spots a third boat in illegal waters. The fisherman over here is standing in front of his numbers as I come by, trying to prevent me from identifying him so that he doesn't get a ticket. That's something he's going to go to jail for. So now he's on my hit list. In these merciless waters, this skipper risks more than a fine. His crew's footing is precarious at best. There they are, see? Still standing on the rails right there. Unbelievable what some people do for a couple of fish. I'm so angry, my hand is shaking. I can't hold still and get the pictures. We might just even want to see this boat for that kind of stuff. So we're going to call him on the VHF now. This is what we're going to get to the VHF. You are committing a crime in your own prosecution, and you will be charged if you do not speak from this boat immediately. There's no answer. So Johnson radios the trooper skiff down on the water. Are you anywhere close to the south line? No, we're up in the mouth of the river now. We got pretty rough. That's F4 we'll work our way down here. South line, man. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a fun afternoon, man. They recommend not to be out here, but uh, we don't have much of a choice. It's our job. we got to come out. If they're not careful, they could end up in the frigid waters. Up in the plain, the weather's also causing alarm. It's getting real hairy here pretty quick. Kind of a race right now because I've got fog coming in over the water about a half mile from me. And I've got to get out of here before the fog gets here or bad things can happen real quick. If he leaves before Van Spronson arrives, the suspect could get away. But the storm's moving in fast. This is extremely dangerous for me, going around here in search. And he's trying to play games and stand in front of his numbers. Not much makes me mad out here, but this makes me all for some fish. You're going to risk my life. He radios Van Spronson for an update. The skiff's closing in, but the sea is a maze of vessels.
Two hours from shore in treacherous waters, and Vance Bronson is outnumbered four to one. Public safety technician Mike Hansen keeps a close eye for any signs of trouble. It's been about an hour and a half or so. We've probably got about another hour left to get into the dock. Vance Bronson heads into the cabin and disappears from view. Sure, Johnson anxiously awaits the vessel's return. Oh, we're there. Finally. Time is 15 and 48 hours. Sergeant Johnson will be contacting the fishing vessel Steinbit. Okay. Okay. Skip yeah, from Sergeant Johnson. I was also the guy in the airplane. Okay. Obviously, we got some serious issues. You know, the uh, putting your guys and you stand in front of the numbers, not even a little bit okay. You understand how it looks when your crew stands in front of your numbers for 45 minutes straight. I'll be honest with you, when I called him on the radio to come down, I basically told the people we're going in handcuffs. I mean, is that just a panic for reflex, or? I think you pretty much said it right there. Okay. We're, we're not criminals here. The man cooperates so Johnson doesn't seize the boat. But the fishermen will still pay the price. Those fish obviously are going to be seized. They're all caught in closed waters. The nets are also going to come with us. The skipper keeps his boat, but pays almost $10,000 in fines, seized equipment, and fish. I hope things get a lot better for you. Back in Bethel, Sergeant Teague Widmeyer is on the hunt for a wanted felon. We're heading up to Queefluck, and it's a village of about 800 people. I have a warrant arrest for his involvement in stealing a Bethel Police Department vehicle. They stole it and gained access to the guns inside the vehicle and began to shoot off rounds. But in order to get his man, Widmeyer must cross the ice road, Bethel's main river that's frozen eight months out of the year. Right now we're on the Cuscoquim River. The ice thickness right now is probably about five feet, and the water's still flowing underneath of us. His patrol vehicle weighs close to 5,000 pounds, so a soft catch could send him plunging into the freezing waters below. You have to be very careful when you're traveling because it, it's deceiving. Some of it may be deeper than what it looks like, so you're driving along and you may end up going under two, three, or four feet of water. In this remote part of Alaska, Widmeyer's hard to miss, and often locals tip each other off when troopers approach the village. Once we start passing people and they're communicating on VHF, They'll let everybody else know that the troopers are on the ice road. The man he's after has a history with weapons. And if he gets word of Widmeyer's arrival, it could get dangerous. We've reached the village of Queefluck, and this is the what they call a downtown. He catches up with the village public safety officer, the town's only full-time law enforcement. Max is our longest BPSO in the state of Alaska. He's the number one guy. Good to see you. Good to see you. Do you remember this case? He was the one that uh, stole the police department, the Bethel Police Department vehicle. Yes, I do. I know where the house is right now. You know where it's at? The team heads out on foot to keep a low profile in the small village. But by now, it's likely the man knows that Widmeyer's here. Sergeant Widmeyer, I was looking for... They're in Bethel. He's going there for a funeral. Oh, okay. Is a funeral today? No. Oh. His aunt passed away a couple days ago. And it's a culture-sensitive thing to not interfere with the uh, funeral settings that are going on. He's not going to be going anywhere. You know where he's at. We'll talk with him another day. Widmeyer takes the remaining time on patrol to check up on the locals. Hello. How you doing, ma'am? 
Pumpkin's pipe. They're drying out their pipe. They'll just let it dry like this in the natural natural wind, and then once they're done with it, they, they may cut it up, and then they'll dip it in seal oil. <laughs> he heads back down the ice road. But before he gets too far, he stops to chat with a local. You got some, you got punk in there? Is that what you got? Yeah. Punk, or ash from tree fungus, is traditionally chewed with tobacco in Yupik culture. This here is uh, the punk. They get these off of trees. And then those, what they'll do is they'll break these down, they'll sell them. And you, uh, like, burn it into an ash. And then you mix it with your tobacco chewing. Okay. <laughs> Make you really, really yeah, yeah, it gives you like a hallucinative type effect. I go around to the surrounding villages and, and sell this. The going rate for punk in the villages is $1.75 a pound. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Travel safe. Okay. Widmeyer's day ends, but the next day, Trooper Gunderson heads back to Quithla to find and arrest a wanted felon. I called the tribal police chief and he said that he knows where he's at right now. He enlists the help of a tribal police officer. There's two houses that are right next to each other uh, that he is staying at. So if you want to just stay out so you can see in case he goes out a back window or something like that. Hey, how are you doing? Do you know why I need to talk to you? No. All right, well, I guess sir, we got a warrant. We got to bring you in and go to Bethel. All right. He goes quietly, and they transport him back down the ice road to face vehicle theft and weapons charges. In Alaska's far western frontier, policing takes on new meaning. Troopers like Aileen Watrosky are responsible for patrolling the remote native villages scattered over 300 miles of rugged tundra. Good to see you. Welcome home. Thank you. Today, she's heading to check on the tiny island village of Shishmaref, just 20 miles south of the Arctic Circle. Well, good afternoon. And in winter, the only way in or out is to fly. It's on the other side of the island from the mainland Alaska. I haven't been there for a while. We'll go out there and patrol around, talk to people. She also must deal with Mother Nature. Springtime is causing tons of ice to break up on the Shishmaref Inlet, their main roadway in winter. This is a really dangerous time of year because people are trying to go hunting, and it's in between weather. You can't really use your four-wheeler. You can't really use your snow machine. Spring's difficult around here. We end up having a lot of search and rescues because people go out on a boat, and the ice will come in and trap them. The ice heats up, and there's a lot of overflow, open leads, weak parts of the ice. Sometimes you can't tell until you're right up on it. Wachowski's only in the village five minutes when a frantic call comes in. There's two snow machines. They break through the ice. Two people? Uh, one or maybe both. By the dump. Straight up from the dump. In these 30-degree waters, it can take only 15 minutes to die of hypothermia. Do they have float coats or anything on the snow uh, machines? We don't know. Is that cold? and village public safety officer Curtis Nyakpak rush to spot them. I guess we'll have to go on foot then. We got a report of possibly two snow machines, one that broke through the ice around here. Almost 10 minutes have passed. The victims could be anywhere. of the local search and rescue team gear up to head out onto the ice. You've got to be very careful. The good ice is green, and the uh, funny ice is dark, around dark. They scour an area notorious for trapping people under the ice, knowing one mistake could cost them their lives. Actually, the channel right here. 
it's uh, three foot right now. Three and a half foot. But with all the stuff that's going on, like the tides coming yep. in and going out, it, some of it is actually like that. If the current swept someone under an ice sheet this thick, there's almost no chance of escape. Uh, it's clear over here. Uh, good, I guess. Over. It's been 20 minutes since the call came in. But then, a break. Uh, you understand it's a uh, horse fireman. Just come back. Okay, we're, we're heading back. The distress cries reported weren't human. Turns out it was a hunter who was butchering a seal, so it was kind of a welfare check, I guess. It's a false alarm, but a good drill. That's kind of the bonus of having a local group that's willing to help. They know the area, they know where to go, they know how to get places, and they know the typical places people break down. I mean, the community's really lucky that they have well, this group of people that are willing to volunteer to go look for people. From one of Alaska's most remote locations to one of its biggest party destinations, almost 650 miles east, Fourth of July weekend draws thousands of partiers to the Kenai Peninsula. It's a four-day party, and Alaska's midnight summer sun means the revelry lasts late into the night. I just really I will board for food. We're on Exit Glacier Road. Everybody from all over the state comes down to the Seward area, and we'll start camping out on a two, two and a half mile stretch of the road for the whole weekend. But the festivities run along the banks of the Resurrection River, where flash floods are common this time of year. You can see the river has shifted from the previous year and has taken out a couple of miles of uh, camping. It's very fast, uh, swift moving water this year. The biggest concern is, of course, everybody starts uh, drinking some alcohol. Anything can happen. A flash flood this weekend could sweep thousands of partying campers away in an instant. the road, Trooper Daryl Christensen is putting out fires, literally. Nice. I don't know what that is. Wrapped in it. Damn. It's just the tip of the iceberg for this weekend. They want to kind of push the envelope a little bit, come up to the roadway, and see if they can do something to get our attention. I think he's bluffing, man. Yeah. <laughs> Simple solution is that. You want our attention? Go get it. Okay, I need everybody over here for me. All you guys over here, make sure you're out of the road. I don't even feel comfortable driving 30 miles an hour on the road with all the people standing by the fog line. But not everyone's as cautious. How are we doing, guys? The reason why I pulled you over you're driving 44. You see all the, a lot of the people standing around the roads? Yeah. Majority of them are intoxicated. Yeah. And if they step out in front of you, you're going to clip them. So you got a driver's license? Yeah. How about all you guys? You got IDs on you? Where are you guys from? He soon discovers that no one in the car is 21. How much alcohol is in the vehicle? No, no, no. Okay, I'm gonna guess there's a case and a couple bottles. Tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know it is a misdemeanor crime to provide alcohol to minors. Yes, sir. I'm a minor myself. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna deal with that. You wanna pop the trunk and let's take that out of there. Yes, sir. Hey guys, believe it or not, people lie to me every day, every single day. <laughs> so what I'm gonna ask you to do is go ahead and pull everything out because I want to make sure you guys aren't gonna get in trouble later on tonight. I'm thinking I see another bottle in there. What's that? Is that more beer down there? He finds almost 40 cans of beer and two bottles of liquor. I'm going to let you have the joy of dumping it all out. Sounds like you guys are turning around heading out of here. All right. If it was innocent fun, it wouldn't have ended like this. All right. They get off with a warning, but the weekend's over for these campers. And it could be over for everyone else, too. The river's actually quite above uh, its normal levels, and they're watching it rise, and they've watched it rise the last couple hours. They said if it gets uh, too high on the roadway or up to the roadway, they're going to actually evacuate the uh, federal campground behind us. In Alaska, hypothermia and that kind of water will set in very, very rapidly. So we might just stop and talk to some of the campers because uh, some of these could very well be underwater here in the next couple hours if it keeps raining here. Hey, the river's coming up still? Oh, will really come up like a lot more? No, they're saying it's already coming up upriver. I expect that most of them behind there is going to be underwater here. Uh, yeah, we appreciate it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want you guys to go to bed and wake up down river. Yeah, right. These out-of-towners are lucky Sergeant Roberts came by. 
but the flood threat doesn't spoil the party downriver. We're gonna get out here and contact these these kids. They're already starting their night early. Hey guys, you guys you guys need to clean up a little bit here. Looks like a dump. So what's the concept behind this game? Oh, this is just a pool. That's just a pool? Okay, that's pretty nasty. You guys have your IDs on you? I have my IDs. Can I see that? Oh, oh, oh. Side or that side? Right there. What side? Right there. Right side. Right side. Right side. Right side. Right side. Right side. Oh, he came. Stop. All right. That guy in the no, gray, right? No, no, that no, guy. No, let me tell you, he can never talk about drugs. He can never talk about drugs. Hey, knock it off. Yes. Hold on, when you got broken up. Just cuff him right there for me, okay? Yep, that guy right there. He can't talk about drugs. Hey, so get away. zip it. No, no, no. I will talk to you in a second. Yes, sir. Officer, I'm big. You don't have to do this. No. Officer, really, please. Hey, zip please. it. Please, come on. Everybody here, right now. Yeah. Leave, right now. Everybody, get out of here. Get out of here. You guys do not disperse. He will go to jail. So leave. Leave right now. What happened? We came up from here. the very beginning. We came up here and then that kid started punching him. And I, I was wondering what was going on. And I asked them what was going on. And then he started punching me too. So this is what I saw. I saw coming after you. And I saw you getting up going after. Okay. Because I saw you guys. Head. Okay. I saw I saw you guys intertwine. So what happened? Uh, we walked up the road and all of a sudden. Uh, we got our asses beat. All right, we were chilling by the campfire. He comes down and he's like, who, who got some cocaine? I was like, get the f out of our campsite talking about cocaine. He was like, what? You want to start some f I was like, I'll, I'll fight you right now if you want to want to cause trouble, problems at my campsite. We're trying to drink and have a good time. I'm going to haul three all out of here. What's all up? three of them. Okay. Here's the deal. All three of you guys are going to jail for disorderly conduct. What? Okay. I'm going to jail? Yep, all three of you guys are going to jail. Okay. Really? We, we, I told you. No tolerance. These seats, you need to go in one vehicle together. Oh, You left. And then that guy needs to go in a separate vehicle than these two. Yeah. They all threw punches, and they're all going to jail for disorderly conduct. As day turns to night, partiers continue lining the highway. And with the threat of the rising river, they're in no condition to evacuate. See that line right there? Trooper Loring heads down to check the water. The river's holding steady for now, but Loring comes across a man dangerously close to its waters. What happened underneath your eye there? It's really treacherous on the creek. So do you fall and hit your... Yes, I did. Need, need a medic? Mm. Any medical assistance, no? If you guys would like to help me, you can give me right about 70 miles that way. Yes. Anchorage? I live in Anchorage. How are you expecting to get to Anchorage? You see these two people? You're not walking to Anchorage tonight, I'm buddy. actually walking. If you plan on walking to Anchorage these 70 miles, you're gonna get tired. And you're probably gonna lay down, and you're drunk, and maybe possibly get hit by a car. You see where I'm coming from? I've owned about seven Crown Victorias, and you know what? I've I've owned them from '56. And okay, well we aren't going there, but where's your you camp? Know where I where, where's your? You know what? You guys sold them. You guys sold them about a month ago. So that's... Okay, well come back here with me. Okay. Sergeant Roberts keeps an eye on him while Loring checks the man's ID. Ten four. Thank you. you put it in there, please. You, you can do that. Wallet. You can do that. Here, put, put it in the middle. I'm not touching it. Put it in the middle. Just drop it. Thank you. Just get, drop it. Hey, get your, get your light yeah, yeah, thank you. Ready Just, to go? Yeah, uh-huh. Are right. you ready to go? Bye. See you. Yeah. Bye. Get Bye. Oh, he's done. He's done. I was just blowing stuff right, Yeah, why did you blow the spot on the trooper car? Dude, I didn't just blow it on the spot. I didn't just blow it on your car. I blew it on the ground. It wasn't on your car. He did it on his car. No, it wasn't on your car. Yes. Yeah. It wasn't on your car. Dude, we were just trying to let you get down the road, man. Yeah, and that's what I was doing. It wasn't on your car. It was on the ground. You know? All right, let's go. All right, I'll see the court. Can I see your supervisor? Yeah, I'm right here. They book him for criminal mischief. It happens quite a bit, especially when people are out here drinking and, you know, trying to Trying to have a good time. We gotta go. We gotta go. We got a guy that had a, a bleeding sled from a vehicle. 
Trooper Loring doesn't know who he's chasing or why. The suspect escapes, but Loring goes to get more help. All right, where I was sitting, they all went back in the woods, but I'm sure they're going to come out soon again. Stop right there. Suddenly, troopers down the road catch the man. I yeah! got in cuffs yeah! I didn't even do anything. I didn't run. I didn't. And guess what? We yeah! will catch you. As the night wears on, the partying escalates. And Trooper Darren Cooper tries to get a handle on things. What is going on? Look at this guy. No, he is. I'm not. All right, giant guy. Stand up real quick. You guys are giant. I know we're giant. You. you guys, we you guys. Are moose. <laughs> we eat moose when we're you guys. It's not long before a serious call comes in. That yeah, guy's described as a white guy, about five foot nine, has a beard, possibly wearing a black shirt. We just have a report of a man who's possibly intoxicated with the gun. Even more so with the guy who has a gun. It puts us at a slight disadvantage just because at that point of semi fair of a fight. Go out here. Just check this guy out. Here's what we got black sweatshirt, white male, about 5'8, five, 5'9, five, goatee, early 20s. You look just like him. You don't have any guns on you, right? Can I just pat you down just to make sure? All right, just turn around for me. So what is, what is that? Something with, a, something with a pipe in it? No. You mind if I take a look? I do. Here's the deal. I don't really care. We're looking for a guy with a gun. I just want to make sure it's a marijuana pipe and not a uh, little snub 22, all right? The man has a marijuana pipe, but no gun. You guys didn't see anybody else walking around. Beer, black shirt. But Cooper spots something suspicious. Come here for a second. Where are you coming from? Uh, party over there, yeah. All right, no guns on anything like that? I actually have a firearm. You have a what on you? A firearm. All right, take your hands out of your pockets immediately. 53, 57, 10 I keep it for bear safety, man. You keep it for bear safety? Yeah, sure. All right. All right. Secure that. NCIC Tango 53. It's a Keltec 9mm. That's a 9mm. Were you trying to tickle a bit? No, it's just bear safety, man. Bear safety? Yes. The 9 mil is going to do nothing to bear other than make it upset. How much you got to drink tonight? Uh, a lot, actually. A lot? Yes. Okay. Can you please take these off me? Tell you what? Can you please take these off me because they kind of hurt a little bit. Take what off? The handcuffs? Yes. yes. Oh, no. The handcuffs are staying on. Okay. You have a firearm on you. You're you want to sit down then? Yeah. Um, yeah, sit down there. He comes walking up, loosely matches that description. Another officer arrives to identify the gunman. Please tell me I'm not getting locked up. Is this the Based on their description, similar, but this isn't the one they were talking about. I'm gonna say right now, I'm trash. I know, I didn't know where you're at. Okay. All right, well you both are safe stuff. Keep going, keep going. Right, he's not the man they're looking for, but he's not going free either. You can't possess a firearm and having consumed alcohol, so he's going to go to jail for misconduct involving weapons in the fourth degree. It's a 9 millimeter. It isn't going to hurt him too much. It scares. It's loud noise. It, it keeps the bears away. When alcohol and guns mix, bad things happen, so we're just keeping in mind our safety and we're trying to go home at the end of our shift. After four long days, the 4th of July festivities wrap up. There's only remnants of trash, and a lot of it's bagged up, and a few places, few campsites were left in disarray. But all things considered... No one was seriously injured, and no trips to the hospital, so I guess we could call this a successful weekend. One hundred miles north, on the Little Susitna River, the 4th of July has wildlife trooper Sergeant Doug Massey on high alert for a different reason. Right now, the kings are spawning. Everybody around here knows it. You know, the, all the poachers know when the kings show up, generally right after the 4th of July. 
I've seen all kinds of strange methods, you know, taking these things illegally. Every weekend, we'd, we'd find fish with bullet holes in them, basically just thrill killing them. This illegal poaching has a huge impact on the local salmon population. Crazy. Look at all the tracks. I've obviously been hitting this pretty hard. This time of year, this should be loaded with fish. There's no fish here. This is bizarre. There's been a lot of foot traffic here. Whether those people were yarding fish out of the, the creek, I don't know. Because once they hit those shallows, they're real easy to see. You know, bright red fish, easy targets. Massey and trooper Jimmy Lindbergh head down river to check known poaching holes. Let's see if there's anybody down at the river. And then uh, you can hook around if, if there is. A concerned citizen stops Lindbergh and reports seeing potential poachers on an ATV. They haven't come back out. That wheeler's still back in there. Let's go for a walk. Vehicles are prohibited in these delicate spawning grounds. Look at what he, look at what he did to get across here. Absolutely. He's on a mission. Well, he had to have crossed right there. I'm guessing. Yeah. See where the water? He crossed the stream. He's right over here. They fear the suspect may be armed. You guys ride in here together? Yeah. Okay. He's gonna pat you down for any kind of weapons or anything, okay? What did we do? You guys crossed the uh, crossed the, the stream well, I, or the river here. I, I, I didn't cross no stream. Good, good. Good. Okay. How did you guys get over here if you didn't just cross that stream? We drove through the woods, so we'll down the trail. Really? Yeah. I don't know what the hell we did, but. Well, you crossed the river there, and uh, uh, you also we, you also tore your wheeler up. The the You're not allowed to cross any water, any part of Even water. Even if it's just like something like this. This is all salmon stream. Crazy. Well, it's been like that for a long time. I'm uh, smelling a real strong aroma of marijuana. Tell me about that. Is that there? Oh, that? That was the only got there. It was? Yeah. It was you when you got here. Boy, it's awful cold for sitting out in the sun for a while. So, this is yours? Yeah. It is yours? Yeah. Okay, that, that's what you're saying. Okay, go ahead and just back off a little bit for it. Because of the strong scent of marijuana, troopers searched both men's backpacks. Did that have weed in it? I honestly don't know. Yeah. And this one you didn't smoke today? Um, earlier today, yeah. Okay. As you probably could guess, you're not going to get your pipe back. Yeah, I think. Right? Yeah, I understand that. You understand. We're going to give you a break on the bigger offense, the, the weed. Yeah. But you're going to get a ticket for riding this thing through the salmon stream. I mean, you can look, and, uh, you know, all along these little undercuts is where the salmon fry like to hide out. This may not seem important to him, but it is. It's, it's really good fish habitat. Trying to protect these few remaining fish that are going to be what we get, you know, four or five years down the road is pretty high priority. So. Uh, that's the reason we're out here and we're, we take this part so seriously. The troopers confiscate their marijuana, issue them a ticket, and send them packing. Ready? Easy to go the other way. But Massey's job isn't just conserving wildlife. Down the road, he makes the leap from protector to enforcer. Did you see what that guy in the car was doing down there? I'm gonna go down there and... What's happening? Is this your property? No? No, it's actually private. Did you see the sign over there? Oh. Yeah, you got any ID on you? No? A run of the man's name turns up two years of probation for selling marijuana. I'll just ask you right now, do you have some on you? Probably a shame. You don't? No, I don't. Okay. What do you got in your pocket right there? This. This one? Yeah, what is that? Tobacco pipe? Oh. 
kasih. Do you got marijuana on you? No. What is that? Is that for fighting? No. Is that like a brass knuckle or something you beat people with? Why you got that? I just found it in the car. I was cleaning the car out. I stuck it in my pocket. Now I wish I wouldn't. Have. Now, you, now you're making me wonder. Do you see how this looks to me? This is contraband. You know that, right? You got a weapon to beat someone's head in here. I mean, there's no other. You know, I know what this is for. Where's the weed? Does she have it? No, she didn't even have it. So you do have weed? No. Let's walk over there. I'll follow you. The man gets consent for troopers to search the car. Which is this here? It's a needle cover. Just be square with us. I don't, I don't like it. You guys shooting speed or crank or uh, meth or heroin or anything? I don't do that. I had a bunch of people in my car the other day with spotlights But the troopers don't buy it. I think I'm being lied to a little bit. Do you mind if I look in the trunk real quick? No. Hmm. What do you suppose this spoon is used for with all the white powder on there and the burn marks there? Got some foil in here with some brown residue on there. So what do you think that'll test positive for? That's no clue. You understand how this all looks, right? You know, we keep coming up with more and more and more. You better you better start shooting straight, dude. The woman claims the drug materials belong to her ex-boyfriend. It's his stuff. It's none of this is I haven't even seen Jack. Relax. 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 You know, it's not a good idea to announce you're going to assault someone in front of two troopers. You could be taking me in handcuffs to jail. But despite the paraphernalia, troopers don't find enough to detain the two. You guys need to get lost. You got to be able to prove it. And this, this time you couldn't. He thinks he, he got away with it this time, but we'll, we'll get him next time for sure. Massey's patrol along the river's edge continues. The Little Sioux winds through the heart of one of Alaska's most crime-ridden areas. And just miles down the road... A little while in Copper Creek. Zero. Hi, folks. How are you? Fine. Good. You have a license search for insurance, please. Are you aware of the Winchell Law in Alaska? This has got a big crack over there, man. I'm not going to give you a citation for it today, but you, but you, need, to get, you need to get a fix, okay? Hey, partner in the back seat, you got your ID on you? Um, I know you're from there, Okay, you do have to give it, because I saw you put your seatbelt on. You were riding without a seatbelt. So go ahead and get your ID out for me, please. I'm only going to ask one more time. Everybody else, keep your hands where I can see them, please. Partner in the back seat, why don't you step out for me so I can talk to you? Go ahead and step out so I can talk to you. Okay. I didn't say take your coat off. I said step out. Okay, go ahead and bring your jacket with you, too. Sir, do you have any weapons, guns, knives, needles, drugs on you? Uh, I don't believe I do. Okay, keep your hands where I can see them. I'm going to patch you down for weapons. Go ahead and put your wallet down, please. Step back. I definitely don't have any weapons. Okay, well, I'm going to patch you down. You understand you're making me nervous moving around in there, reaching inside your coat for stuff? Hey, driver, let's not keep moving around. Passenger, same thing, please. Okay. His search yields no needles. It's obvious, sir, that you use a lot of drugs. I can see all the needle marks in your hands all the way across your hands. Go ahead and stay here. Stay where I can see you, okay? NCS 49 and also 20. A call to dispatch reveals the man has more to worry about. He has a warrant for failing to appear in court on a previous DUI charge. Put your hands behind your back. Yeah. You have a warrant for your arrest. Understand that? Yes. Go ahead and hop in the car. Watch your head and have a seat, please. I know how to do this. Yeah, maybe the dogs should get arrested. With one man in custody, the situation escalates. Your buddy. He's going to jail for a warrant. Does he have any drugs that he stashed in the car? No. Okay, I need you to be really honest with me here because this is going to go somewhere else. Do you mind if I search for drugs then? 
Well, I need to look in the car. I look in no, the car. I'm not going to have you look in the car. I have enough probable cause to seize the car right now and apply for a search warrant. Okay? That means I'm going to take the car, get a tow truck down here, and you guys are going to walk. Or you can let me search the car. No drugs in this car. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you one last time. It's a yes or no, sir. Okay. The man agrees to let Trooper Veras search his vehicle. Sir, go ahead and turn around. Walk back to the back of the car. Keep your hands where I can see him, please. Ma'am, go ahead and step out of the vehicle. Go ahead and turn around. Put your hands behind your back. Did you find anything in the car? We you know where it came from. See if there's anything in the trunk. Yeah, I'm good. All right, sir. Um, How much alcohol have you had today? I have not had any alcohol today. The beer was cold. Those are from last night. They're from last night. Yeah. It must be mighty cold out. No, really? I'm gonna run you through a series of field sobriety tests. Make sure you're sober. Keep your eyes on my finger, please. I had me all the time, sir. So. Fine. We're almost done. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you a PBT to see where you're at. Okay. Take a deep breath, sir. Your left hand blow. Keep blowing. Blow, 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 blow. You're not blowing, sir. I was blowing. No, you're not. There's I a full meter on here. Okay? Yeah, deep yeah. breath and blow. Hands behind your back, please. So you're under arrest for DUI. Where did that broke? 141 lot. Oh crap. Just down the road, the party continues. So dispatchers called us. They said there's a intoxicated male sitting on his porch. She's cussing at children and um, call, trying to call out his neighbors to come fight with them. They should I want to get there, find out what happened, see if we can help the situation out, see if we can calm them down, or if they need to go to jail. Knock on me 30, 10, 23. 30, 10, 30. Kind of have to keep an eye out for them. They can be really unpredictable. I'm Trooper Ray, State Troopers. How are you doing today? That's fine. That's good. Yeah? You doing okay? Fine. Okay. Hey, we got a complaint that you're out here yelling at some kids and swearing that at kids. That is not true. Okay. I did not yell at kids. I yelled at the people over there because they're... Sir, do you have some idea on you that I can see real quick? Right here. All right, you ain't got any guns, knives, drugs, anything like that on you? No, I got... You got some scissors? Oh, no, that's my... That's yeah, just drop those on the ground. Beer out. That's how I get my beer. Okay. Um, how much you had to drink today, sir? <sighs> One beer. One beer? What yeah. are you upset about? You see the d in my yard? I do. Okay. That's mm -hmm. not my dogs. That's their dogs. Okay. Let's say they're ganging up on me. Him. Right over. Hi. How you doing? He comes out. Sir, right, right now. Up the now you're being too loud. All right. If you keep being loud, I am going to arrest you and take you to jail. All right. Well, that's fine. So you're causing a disturbance to your neighbors. Guys, you're all in bed together. Do you want to blow into this for me? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. The man's breath alcohol level is 0.238, meaning he's likely had at least 10 beers. Go ahead and stand up for me, okay? You're kidding. Uh, can you ask me why you're doing this? I can tell you why I'm doing this. Why? Is that you're continuing, even when I'm here, to be belligerent, to yell at your neighbors. Now you're going to cause G healing. Stand still right here, okay? I'm going to sue somebody pretty good. Five hundred fifty miles northwest near Nome, hundreds of native villages are separated by miles of Alaska's harshest terrain. And today, Trooper John Strobel is heading to one of them, the village of White Mountain. I'm going to do a felony probation check. He's a young man. In the past, he's had handguns, which would be illegal since he's a felon. And I think he's known as a local marijuana peddler, too. Every trip to the village poses new dangers. Since there's a report of a grizzly bear in the schoolyard, I'll, I'll bring my shotgun this time. Gotta have PFD because we're gonna be going out on the boat. Sometimes the weather will keep you trapped in the village. Sometimes you run into a big case and you just have to stick around a little bit longer. 
the village is 60 miles away. Strobel takes a commercial flight, which means anyone in the village can be tipped off to his arrival. I don't necessarily want them to know what flight I'm on, but uh, they're usually not too surprised. These isolated villagers don't always trust outside law enforcement, making these one-man patrols especially risky. She to death once again. Strobel immediately meets with village public safety officer Dan Harrelson. I'll just let you take the lead on it. And they head straight to the probationer's residence. Okay, I don't see this four-wheeler here, but... Uh, we took off. He's got a different door. We have to use the utmost caution that we don't know how he's going to react. Up around the corner. How old are your shoes, then? Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey we're going to come in. We've got to do a probation check. Probation officer wants us to search the house for any alcohol, drugs, or firearms. Do you have any of that stuff? Because we're going to look, and if we find something, we just don't want to be surprised. Just let us know what it'll make. You know, that way we can get out of here quicker. A preliminary search turns up alcohol, marijuana, and unmarked pills. You should be in possession of prescription medication unless you're prescribed the medication not even my mom though. okay well where'd you get it he says he got the pills from a friend in exchange for some marijuana you know the rules man no dope no alcohol no guns strobel arrests him and brings him to the village holding cell is it unlocked Then he heads out to find the man who traded the pills for marijuana. You got my full gauge in that one? Yep. All right, sweet. Our ice just went out in the river here a few days ago. You'll notice there's ice trucks going down the river. These mini icebergs can rip their small boat wide open and plunge them into ice-cold waters. Come on out. Hey, how you doing, sir? Uh, did I wake you up? Yeah. We were down talking to uh, a little bit earlier and took a little marijuana away, a little alcohol away, but we took some pills away from him that he said he had gotten from you. Oh, no, I didn't give him one. He said he got those from you. No, he's got, he's got no, I don't have no kind right there. I got different ones. I just got those ones right there. You know? I don't have any more of these. You didn't give him those and he gave you a little bit of pot? No. We're just trying to confirm whether or not what he's saying. Be honest with you, because we already got the story from you. Okay. What happened? Well, I traded some of the marijuana. How much marijuana did he give you for the pills? Uh, just, uh, just a little bit. And how many pills did you okay. give together? It's only those three. Okay, so... Yeah, no, 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 vitamin C, I gotta take those. Okay. What What did you tell him uh, they were? I just told him there's a decent there. Okay. He just admitted trading him marijuana for the prescription pills. However, it turns out that the prescription pills that he said were oxys were actually just vitamin Cs. You know, he kind of got ripped off, but uh, in either case, you know, he's it's still illegal to do that. They let the man off with a warning for now, but he could face charges after Strobel files his report. Medicine is to make you feel better, right. get better, so don't you can't, you can't give that to anybody else. All right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks for talking to us. All right. They head back to town so Trooper Strobel can escort the man in custody on the next flight out to Nome. It just confirms that our guy on probation is, you know, he's in the drug trade. You know, now he's uh, not just dealing with marijuana, but he's dealing with prescription medications, which is a big problem out here.